Hello, my fellow Ripplers. This is Chris Miles, your cash flow expert and anti financial advisor. Welcome to our show. It's for you and about you, those of you that work so stinking hard for your money and you're ready for your money to start working harder for you right now. You want that freedom and cash flow today, not 30 or 40 billion years from now, but right now, so you can live that life that you love with those you love. But most importantly, it's not just about getting rich, it's about living a rich life, enriching the lives of others. Because as a rippler, you can create that ripple effect as you are blessed. And I'm so blessed and so grateful to be here today. I appreciate you guys tuning in. Appreciate all you, the fact you guys have been sharing it and binging, you know, even present company included. I really appreciate all the things you guys do as listeners to make this ripple effect real. And so thank you so much for being here. Hey, as a reminder, guys, you can always look for more information on moneyripples.com. You can always get more stuff there. We even got a playlist on infinite banking. We got playlists on different things of like different clients and what they've done. So go feel free to check out some of that new material now. Chris Miles was able to retire twice by the time he was 39 years old, but he's not content to just enjoy his own financial freedom and peace of mind. Chris wants you to have your own ripple effect so you can live free today. He's not the financial advisor you expected. He's the anti-financial advisor you deserve. He's jumping behind the mic right now, ready to make waves. Here's Chris Miles. All right. So I've got a special guest here today. Someone that you know reached out to me and I thought was interesting. Uh, because uh, you know, often I don't get, you know, people that just reach out randomly. I get like a lot of people will pitch me, like the typical guest. Joe is like, hey, I've actually been following you for for several years and uh, I kind of want to share my story. And uh, he's got a really cool story about how he's created a journey to financial freedom, uh, even to the point where he was, you know, in Hollywood working as a producer, you know, for like Netflix and, you know, and HGTV and things like that. Um, that in, in of itself is pretty interesting, but the fact that he's kind of moved into doing real estate, became financially independent, and now is doing things with his short-term rentals out in the Southeast. And so I want to bring on Joe here today just to really talk about that and his experience and his journey so you guys can learn from it too. So Joe, welcome back to this podcast, but now you're the one being interviewed versus the one listening to the interviews. Yeah, no, Chris, this is great. I've been listening to you for what feels like three, four, five years now, and just excited to uh, chat with you and, and tell my story. So give us more background than what I gave the, the audience here. Yeah, so I'm originally from Boston. I've been working in TV now for 15, 20 years. Uh, I moved out to California in 2011. Uh, mm -hmm. Worked out in LA for a little while. And then uh, that scene wasn't quite the one for me. So I ended up moving out uh, to Knoxville, Tennessee in 2012. And Surprisingly, there's a huge TV community here in, in Knoxville, HGTV. This is actually where they're based in their headquarters. So I worked for a production company here and been doing TV ever since. You had to make a pretty drastic shift, especially as things started moving to streaming, didn't you? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, the streaming wars hit and that was, uh, you know, it was good for the Dwayne, the Rock Johnson and Kevin Hart's of the world where, you know, the streaming giants, they wanted those big names, but it was a little bit harder for, uh, for the smaller guys. Yeah. Yeah. So what was that decision for you? Like what, what really created, got you to say, all right, I got to do something different. What was that catalyst for you? I mean, it even started a little bit before the, the streaming war started. I'd say in 2016, my wife and I had just got married. We were both making great money. We were both doing well uh, here in Knoxville, but you know, we were following the traditional investing path, the 401k, the company benefits. And we were just looking at it. We're like, how this just doesn't seem right. Like, I mean, I know from a TV industry standpoint, like I did not want to do this until I was 65. I couldn't do this mm -hmm. until I was 65 because there is, you know, some ageism in this industry where like by 45, 50, 55, it's like you kind of start getting pushed out. You know, mm -hmm. and I was lucky enough, I started when I was 15 years old that I was able to see that young um, I was like, oh my God, <laughs> this is a young man's game. So, you mm -hmm. know, we knew that. So in 2016, we were like, we got to do something different. Like this traditional investing path is just not right for us. And I'd mm -hmm. seen my parents invest in real estate. They were both teachers, you know, and they were able to give us this amazing life on a teacher's salary because they invested in real estate. Now for them, that was more, that was back in Boston. So, I mean, that was more of like a, an equity play than a cash flow game. But um, I saw that. So in 2016 through 2019, we started buying single family homes mm -hmm. and uh, it was great. But, you know, we, we weren't really running it like a business. Like we didn't know what the heck we were doing. We bought one property a year from 2016 to 2019. And we had no idea what we were doing. <laughs> so we never heard of cash flow. We never heard the terms 
generational wealth. We never knew. We just knew we were supposed to do it because it was different than the traditional path and it was a good thing. Um, yeah. And then I'd say 2019 was really when we had our big like aha moment. Yeah. So I was doing in 2019, I was doing a pitch tape uh, with a guy here in Knoxville. He owned a ton of multifamily and I was driving along with him. We were recording and he started just throwing out those terms, generational wealth, cash flow, financial freedom, like just I had owned three properties at that time. and I had never heard those terms. Like whenever we had spare money from the three properties, like, oh, like, oh, vacation money. Like, let's go use it. Right. <laughs> like we weren't running them right. We weren't raising rents. It was just mm. like a, a thing we knew we should do. So in 2019, when he said that, he's like, you need to start listening to podcasts. You need to start reading books. And that's just where it kicked off. Like I, I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I, I jumped on the Bigger Pockets community and everything was just like, <sighs> It was almost just like a whole aha moment. Like, I can't believe this world exists. Oh my God. Like you can retire before 65. Like mm -hmm. I don't have to work until I can't move anymore. Like it was just such a mind blowing experience when you enter that world of this new education. Um, and it was great. And so from 2019 to 2020, we bought four properties in one year. So we went from buying one property a year to buying four in one year. So, I mean, yeah. it really, yeah. just we started running it like a business. We were raising rents. We were accessing the equity in the properties. And we really, we just started rolling with it. Yeah. yeah. That's really interesting. Just out of curiosity, who was the, who was the investor that, that sparked that in you? Is it somebody that we know by chance? P possibly. He's a great guy. It's uh, Jake Stenziano with Rand Properties. Huh. Okay. Yeah, I haven't met him yet. Much. Yeah. I was just doing a pitch tape on him and he's just super energetic, charismatic guy. And like, I mean, I, the pitch tape didn't go anywhere, but I mean, it changed my life. Like just that, mm -hmm. that driving with him, I was like, Oh my gosh. <laughs> if anything, that pitch tape was for you, wasn't it? Yeah. I was just sitting there. I was just, I was blown away. I was like, here I am. I think I'm this savvy investor. I own three properties, but like, I had no idea what I was doing. 2019 to 2020 was a big year for us. We bought those four properties. We were rolling the cash flow. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, we, so it was seven properties. We were averaging a cash flow of 500 per door. Uh, which is great. Knoxville is a great cash flow market. We were going pretty well. And then, you know, in 2021 was, was a really good year. I mean, it was, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you have those moments where it's called a gut check, right? You know, yes. different moments in your life have a gut check. I like to call it a pocket check. So in 2021, we were still rolling. We were both doing our W2s, but the TV industry was just, it was just all over the place. I mean, the streaming mm -hmm. Wars. I mean, you just never knew what was going to get picked up, what wasn't. It was. It's so hard to go from a season one of a show to a season two because yeah. there's just so much competition right now. Like you just, there's no such thing as appointment television anymore unless you're the NFL. So it's just, it's just hard. And and 2021, like we were hitting a lull at the company I was at, and I was like, well, I'm okay, right? Like I own seven properties, and and our wealth and our net worth was great, but like the cash flow still wasn't there. Like we mm -hmm. couldn't retire. Like it was good, but like these long-term rentals aren't gonna give us financial freedom anytime soon. They're in 10, yeah. 15 years. Yeah. Like if we just did long-term rentals, we were going to be golden. Like it, it was going to allow us to retire probably 15, 20 years earlier than we normally would have. But like, it's such long-term rentals are, are tried and true, but they're, it's a slower game, you yeah. know? Absolutely. Uh, so yeah, we had our pocket check where we're like, okay, we're we're getting somewhere, we're doing well, but we're not, we're still not close to financial freedom. That's when all of a sudden the short-term rentals came in and we yeah. were actually at one in Livingston, Tennessee, going to visit, going to visit family. And, um, we were like, we can do this, right? Like, no, we can't. Yes, we can. No, we can't. <laughs> we don't have the patience to deal with short-term rental guests. It's like, we, <laughs> it was just such like an imposter syndrome of like, we can't do this and trying to get over that. And then we just jumped in. We said, we, we got to do something here. We don't want to wait another 10 years to retire. Like we want to try to retire by our late thirties. We're both in our mid thirties now. It's like, how can we speed yeah. this up? How can we try to retire by our late thirties? And that's right. just, we, we just dived in. We bought a cabin in Gatlinburg the summer mm -hmm. of 2021. And, and again, just mind was blown. We were like, Oh my gosh. <laughs> and it's just, it's such a, a vehicle of cash flow. It's triple. One cabin is triple the cash flow of a long-term rental. Oh yeah. And it's not like what it was five years ago. There's so many systems and automations in place. Like I could have never run a short-term rental five years ago. I mean, mm -hmm. just 
you know, having to hand deliver keys or, or constantly dealing with phone calls with guests. It's like, right. there's so much automation now that is just streamlined. So yeah, I think it was June or July of 2021, we bought our first short-term rental and it was great. I mean, that actually got us to our level one financial freedom. Yeah. When you say level one, what do you refer to? Uh, we, I mean, I think other people have referred to it, but I mean, level one financial freedom is like when all your costs are covered. So like yeah. all of our, you know, our monthly budget and spending is all covered by uh, profits from the property. Yeah, that's kind of how I distinguish between financial independence versus financial freedom, which is like that level two, right? We hit that one cabin, got us to that level one financial freedom. And wow. uh, yeah, in October 2021, I actually quit my job. Wow, congratulations. That's great. Yeah. Which is ironic because like the industry is so toxic that like that's <laughs> why we were even pursuing this anyways. But the irony was I was actually with a company I really loved. But at the same time, it was just like, we're ready, you know? So now I just do some freelance TV here and there because I still love the industry and yeah. love the contacts, but we're hyper-focused on property. That's great. Yeah. Now, I want to go back a little bit, kind of like, you know, bridge this whole journey gap, right? So, uh, you know, you mentioned that, you know, it was kind of the aha to you that the 401k wasn't the answer, right? Going the traditional path. Now, I find that fascinating because you're in your mid-30s. Mm -hmm. So when you look back, well, you start working when you're 15, but... For yeah. most people that are around your age or even younger, their entire working career, when they were saving, the market was always up. So it was it was like infallible. How did you see that so quickly? It was just, uh, you just, you get your statements, you review them, you project out. And it's like, you, mm -hmm. you know, it's always calculating what your monthly payment will be, you know, when you're older from the 401k. Mm -hmm. I just saw that and I was just like, this just isn't good enough. And it's like, I think I saw the age that I'd have to get to. And I was like, that's not good enough. Like, I mean, it, there's no way I will last in this industry until my late fifties, sixties, you know? And I was like, we got to right. try something different. We got to do something different. You know, here we are. It's like, I started super early in my career and, and I mm -hmm. got to a high level a lot earlier than most because I started so young. And so I'm like, yeah. I'm at, I can't go any further in my industry. I'm at the, the best of where I can be. And I, I'm kind of seeing it from the top and I'm like, this just retiring in my sixties and fifties is just not what I want. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, tell us this. I mean, what, what's like some advice you would give to our listeners here? I mean, you've been listening to the show forever. What would be the advice you would give based on the experiences you've had? I'd say my biggest mistakes have been, you know, just, just saying no too quickly. Like here I am, I'm in Knoxville, Tennessee, and one of the most visited short-term rental markets is right down the street from me in Gatlinburg. And I yeah. know that I heard different stuff about like, oh, we should get into it, we should get into it. And I was just like, no, no, we're doing safe, tried and true long-term rentals, which I still love. But it's like, I, put, I could have bought the property I ended up buying in 2021 for probably $200,000 less if I just did it a year before. So, I mean, right. just don't say no too quickly. Do due diligence on everything. Like I did due diligence on multifamily. I went through the whole thing. I took people out to coffee. I educated myself and I realized that's not really what I want. So then I moved on to the next thing. And so that's what I would say to people is really just dive in. Um, and we actually bought another short-term rental at the end of 2021 in Blue Ridge, Georgia. Wow, that's great. Towards the, I guess, the end of my story where we bought that, that other short-term rental. And then at the beginning of this year, we had another, like what I like to call the pocket checks. So I was actually uh, diagnosed with Chiari malformation type one in the brain. It's a super long story. It's something that involves uh, brain surgery, skull surgery and spine surgery. So it's like a, a super scary surgery, a long, long story there, but I ended up having to have brain surgery uh, just about a month ago in February. Mm -hmm. And so that's a, you know, another pocket check moment. They told me I could not do any work for, for uh, eight weeks. Like, I mean, it's, it's wow. an expensive thing. I had to go out to Colorado and that mm -hmm. was like a big, another pocket check moment, but a good pocket check moment. Cause we had a lot of worries leading up to a surgery like that, but um, mm -hmm. none of it was about money. And that is something where I'm so thankful to real estate because like the anxiety you feel, I mean, we got twin boys who are two and a half years old and my wife is pregnant. So it's like, oh, wow. I was terrified. I was like, oh my God, like I'm about to have brain surgery. But I knew if anything ever did happen to me, they were taken care of. Or if I needed longer to recover, we're okay because of properties. And that's something that I don't know, like I'm just super thankful for. Yeah. No, it's good that, like you said, like part of your regret was the opportunity cost of not acting sooner. Yeah. But at the same time, at least you acted 
And uh, it was just at the right time too. Cause I mean, you don't have that worry as a result. I mean, you, you could say, Hey, I'm going to have to deal with this. We're going to get through it. And, and by the way, you look great for just a month out of surgery. Uh, yeah. You'd never <laughs> notice the difference, you know, and maybe that's why you have the cap. You're like, well, you'd visually see a difference, but you know, the no, truth just, is, I mean, you, you seem very coherent. You look great, you know? Yeah, no, it's just, um, it was a brain surgery that like affected headaches and dizziness. So it was nothing mm. to, you know, other side of it, but, um, no, I mean, I'm, I'm three and a half weeks post brain surgery, which is so wow. weird to say. And I was so eager to get like back moving and grooving. It's like, I, I jumped on a Magnolia show to help them out for a little bit. Like I just, mm. I feel great. I got more energy and no more headaches. So it was, it was a good experience. Well, great. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you having on. And I, I know you, you have a partnership kind of opportunity that's available for some of these short-term rentals. Can you explain that really quick, really quickly? Yeah. Yeah. So we've really, you know, uh, we've really taken the short-term rental stuff to the next level. Like we have our uh, Instagram page where people follow us uh, that's at Southern Suns properties uh, on Instagram, but we're also starting to work with partners uh, in different States, California, New York, who want to get into the short-term rental market. That's so prominent in the Southeast where we are. So we have yeah. Gatlinburg, we got North Carolina, we got Blue Ridge, Georgia. Um, so we're just starting to reach out to people, looking to partner with folks, help them get into this game. You know, it's like we understand the automations. We know the cleaners, the handymen, the different people that are that make this so streamlined in all of those markets. Yeah. So we're just um, starting to have those conversations and, and start starting to bring it up to that next level. That's great. Yeah. So like you said, you have an Instagram handle we could put in the show notes. Any other way they can contact you? Uh, no, that's the best way. Just uh, DM Perfect. us, you know, holler at us that way. And, and we can kind of, you know, share our experience and story and um, and talk to them about it. I mean, it's, you know, the long-term rentals, it's like, it's not very interactive. It's like, you know, the first of the month is a great day, but the short-term yeah. rentals is just so much fun. Like it is just, you're getting pinged every week with new guests coming in. Mm -hmm. And it's so weird. Like we'll go five, six, seven guests in a row without even having any interaction with them, without even knowing people are there, except for like the ring camera ping. And it's yeah. just it's amazing what the automation and the systems do for you. Like we have two short-term rental cabins and we probably spend about accumulatively of like 30 minutes to 60 minutes a week working on it. Wow. I mean, it's, That's it's amazing. great. Yeah, That's, it is amazing. Well, Joe, I appreciate your time today. It's been awesome and, and such a great story, such a fantastic story and so many lessons to learn here. So Again, everybody, we'll put Joe's handle in the, into the uh, show notes there so you can follow him on Instagram and reach out to him if you want to reach out to him. Uh, but again, take a lesson from Joe, right? It's, you know, you know, if the change has to be made, then the change has to be made. You got to take those little gut checks, those pocket checks, and really act on those things. Because that's what really changes your life is when you actually do something different. And yeah. so, guys, I hope you make it a wonderful and prosperous week, and we'll see you later.